everyone, Stephanie Denman here from the Denman Homestead. And today, this today's video is going to be kind of um, mixed together between two days because I'm doing a follow-up video today. Uh, last night, we ran out of time. We ran out of daylight. Uh, we tried to do it later in the evening so that it was cooler during the day to do all of this, but we just ran out of light. So you may see some mixed... Uh, blended clips from today and the previous day. But for a warning, this video is going to be um, about chicken processing, the processing of our roosters. We have too many roosters and um, you know that saying, too many cocks in the hen, hen house? Yeah, we've got too many cocks in the hen house. So I'm going to be uh, processing some. Last night, we, I helped Bree learn how to process her her roosters, and today, um, along with one of mine, and today I'm going to finish up processing my extra roosters as well. So if you would like to skip this video, I understand, or if you would like to hang out with me today to learn how to process roosters or process chickens in general, um, I encourage you to learn. I think um, it's important for everyone to understand um, where your food comes from. and how to humanely, ethically um, process that meat. And before I get into it, I just want to let you know that I do give thanks for all of the life that was given um, so that we can provide food for our family. And I don't take this process lightly. Um, it's a very important step in our, in our homestead. So uh, with that being said, let's get into it. I will point out that part of my gear is a um, sharpening stone. Uh, this stone has uh, three different settings. It's coarse, medium, and fine. So if I find that my blade is getting a little dull, I can sharpen it on this. Um, comes in handy. I've also got some heavy duty scissors and my thermometer for my water that I'm going to start boiling because we need this to um, pluck the feathers for the chickens. So I've got um, a trash can set up here for the feathers and the entrails here. And I have a cooler set up here with some ice in it. These are frozen jugs of water that once I'm done processing the chicken, I can just throw it in there. Um, got a crate over here for the rooster. And then I've got my restraining cone over here, graphic content. Here we've got the, the restraining cone where the chicken will be upside down and then a bucket underneath to catch um, the blood. So that is my setup. Got my um, pot of water here and my propane tank that I'll be turning on to um, dip the, the chicken in once it's deceased to remove the feathers. The, ch the water I prefer to be around 145 to 160 degrees so just keep it check, um, keep an eye on your water. Uh, if it gets any hotter than that, you run the risk of cooking your chicken instead of just scalding it to remove the feathers. Homestead, and I have some help today. Jenny and Brienne are here to help me. One thing is super important: you're going to need a very sharp knife. If you don't have a sharp knife, um, you can use like bolt cutters seen that um, but I don't recommend it um, I use a sharp knife and you're gonna slice the jugular um, the reason why you want it to be really sharp is because you don't want to miss and you don't want to have to saw at it that's not gonna be humane so make sure your knives are sharp I have two different fillet knives here um, both are very sharp so this is what we're gonna be using today to uh, bleed out the chicken I'm not going to show the actual dispatch, but I just want to show you. So the chicken goes in head first, and right here on the neck, if you'll, you guys want to come see here, um, you'll need to look for the jugular, and it's just uh, the main vein that you're going to want to cut in order to bleed them out. It's 
gonna start flopping a lot, and that's normal. Yeah. It's like the blood leaving its muscles. I leave them for like three to five minutes. Okay, so it's at this stage, um, it's at this stage in the process where um, our chicken is now deceased in the restraining cone that I'm gonna go ahead and remove his head and put it in the bucket that the blood uh, ran into. So I'm gonna do that now. And then um, I'm actually gonna use those heavy duty, duty scissors for this part just so that I don't dull my knife so much trying to cut through bone. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that while my water is heating up and it's almost to temperature now. And I'm gonna turn the temperature down low once we get it up. So because if we leave it on high, it's gonna continue to rise. And then by the time you wanna scald your next bird, it'll be too hot. So let me get to that and then we'll show you the next step. Okay, so we're gonna drop our bird in the water. You're going to really want to push down with those feet and get everything submerged. Kind of swirl it around because the feathers can sometimes act as a um, like a water deterrent. So you're going to want to try to get underneath all that. Use the feet to kind of push down. We're going to do this for a minute or two and then we're going to bring the bird out and try to pull out some feathers. If the feathers pull out easy, that means that you're done and uh, you can start to go ahead and pluck the bird. This part doesn't smell too great. If you've ever washed a dog or uh, something along those lines, similar to that. So the feathers are starting to kind of come out, but I'm just dunking it a few more times to really make sure. Some of these tail feathers are really tough wings. Right. I'm going to go ahead and put these gloves on because it, the um, bird is pretty hot from the hot water. And I'm thinking it might make it a little easier to pull these feathers off. We'll see. I normally just do it with bare hands, but try it this way first. So this part can be kind of back breaking, leaning over something. So I'm just sitting down. I'm gonna have my bird kind of between my legs in this trash can as I take the feathers off. Now they do have chicken pluckers. I don't own one, wish I did. Uh, they're pretty pricey, so I just do it by hand. I've seen some pretty cool homemade chicken pluckers before. But do you see how this, the feathers are just kind of, they're just kind of coming off. Know, like you might be asking like why the hot water well hot water really helps to open up the pores and the follicles where the feathers are and it helps to release that feather uh, easier you can definitely pluck a chicken without hot water but it's just a little bit more difficult this is pretty much the most uh, time-consuming part of everything. 
These roosters are not going to be very big. They're not bred for meat. Production anyway. So they're not like a meat a meat bird per se. But they definitely will provide meals. Off the gift. walk you through every single step so if there's a step that you want to skip feel free to do that gave it a quick rinse gave it a quick rinse just to see what I was working with rinsed off some of the feathers I still got a little bit more to go okay this is the part where we're gonna do the evisceration so if so this is something that you don't want to watch feel free to skip this um, but basically evisceration is taking care of the insides of the bird and breaking it down to where it's in your the state that you would see in the grocery stores. So heads up, about to get started. Okay, so I've got my fully plucked bird here. Um, again, there might be a few fin, uh, pin feathers on it, but you can take a lighter to it and they will scorch off really easy. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the legs and remove the legs first. I am going to keep these feet um, to make a good stock or a really great dog treat. But here, if you can see, there is a um, like a, a, a joint here, um, a knee bone, if you would, if if you could say that. I'm just going to put a little bit of tension and pressure on it, like like I'm kind of trying to bend it forward, and I'm just going to start to make a slit just like that. And you're not going to cut through any bone. This is just ligament and cartilage. So there's no bone to cut through here, so it should come off really easily. Um, the bone, if you'll notice, is right here. So we're going to make just this cut like that. Put that aside. Do the same to this joint. Now we've got what looks like a drumstick for feet. Um, if you'll notice here at the wings, typically when you go to the grocery store, this tip of the wing is cut off. It's just for appearances. You can leave this on here or you can cut this off if you want. There's really nothing, no, nothing to eat in here. Uh, I, I, normally, I normally don't cut this off. It just is extra work for me, so I'll leave. You can cut this off if you'd like. Okay, so the next part that we're going to get to is the neck. And what we're going to do here is we're going to make a slit right here in the skin. Skin's pretty loose. But if you'll notice right here, there's kind of like a bulge in the neck. On the left-hand side, this is where the craw or the crop is. This is where they store all of their food that they just ate. So it's... Um, recommended that you um, withhold food for about 24 hours before you butcher your chickens just because if you end up puncturing this it can make a big mess. It's not mandatory but it's just um, easier and sometimes even when you withhold food they'll still find grass and other things to uh, eat on. So I've just made a slit right here. I pulled the skin back a little bit and made a slit um, being careful not to puncture this. It's always going to be on the left hand side of the bird when you're facing the bird. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of open this up a bit and I'm going to carefully cut some of the skin back off the neck because what I'm going to be looking for are two tubes. One of them is the trachea, one of them is the esophagus. So one of them, um, you know, allows the chicken to breathe and one of them allows the chicken to eat. Um, and we're going to basically find these two tubes and we're going to separate them from the neck. Being careful not to uh, bust this little this little sack open. 
You can give some force to it, but uh, just try. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell here, but we've got two separate tubes, one right here and one right here. We're just breaking this membrane away from the skin because it's going to make it easier to pull it all out. Okay, once we've got this all kind of loosened up, you can either cut this off at the base of the neck or just leave it and rip it all out. So for now we're gonna we're gonna leave it. If it, if it gives us some trouble getting it out, then we'll we'll cut it. Sometimes they do. Depends on the bird. Okay. So now we've got this separated from the neck here. We're just gonna leave that be. Now we're gonna start on the back side. Alright, let's talk about the anatomy really quick of this bird. Um, it's going to be pretty similar to a hen. Uh, the only difference is that you're going to have some testicles. And we'll, I'll show you those in a minute. But um, this part back here is a vent. Right here. That's the vent. And um, right here is an oil gland. So we are going to cut this tail off um, all together and everything's going to come out at once. And we're going to carve around this bone right here. There's a bone right here. We're going to carve around that, and this whole piece is going to come out. So, in order to do that, we're going to need to take some skin right here between the hip bone and the breastbone. This is the breastbone right here and the hips. And we're going to cut this skin and open up the bird. Now, be careful. You just want to cut the skin, okay? You don't want to puncture any of the intestines. So, start slow and do a slicing motion like that. You're going to see a fat layer. Just keep on going until you barely have a hole there. Now what you're going to do is you're going to have to pry this bird open. Okay, it's going to allow you to work with it like that. Okay, now everything in here is tied to the vent. It basically leaves the body through the vent. So we're going to take our hand in here and do a scooping motion and break away all the internal organs away so that we can get it out. Okay, right here's the gizzard. What I'm doing right now is I'm just feeling around and pulling. Kind of breaking everything loose so that I can scoop it out. Can you see inside that bird? Not much left. So let's go over what we've pulled out. 
you remember this? This was up here. This is the crop. So we've got the crop here. That's a good sign that it's out. This is testicles. These two are the bird's, uh, rooster's testicles. This right here and this right here are lungs. Typically they're very hard to get out. Um, they're stuck basically in the rib cage, but as I was scraping and pulling, I was able to pull them out as well. This is the bird's heart. And this is the bird's liver here. This darker, uh, this darker piece here. Now this, the liver, the heart, and the gizzard, oftentimes people keep these and eat these. Um, they also keep the neck. And I will just show you something that's really important when you're wanting to save a, uh, a liver, is if you look right here, there is this green sack. This is the chicken's bile duct or gallbladder. If you puncture this or pierce it in any way, it can taint all of the meat and make it bad. This is the one thing you want to make sure that you don't burst open. Okay? So when you want to get when you want to keep these chicken livers, just make sure that when you cut away from the when you cut the liver, give yourself some space away from that. Okay? Even if you need to cut it in different chunks or different in, in different sections, just uh, make sure that you're giving yourself some room for that bile duct, okay? to stay intact. Now this is the heart. And let's talk about the gizzard. So if you want to save the gizzard, just cut it away from the, the rest of this here. Okay. The gizzard is an organ that chickens have that they store rocks, sand, grit, other material inside here that helps them break down their food and it becomes more digestible. What you do is you just make kind of an incision all the way around like this and you can open it up. Let's get on the side of it. You can actually see that there's pieces of sand, rocks, pebbles, grass, all sorts of stuff in here. Okay, we throw this away. And if you want to keep this and eat this, you need to peel. Do you see how there's a layer right here? This yellow layer peels right off. Just rinse this, and this is what you can eat. This right here, do you see this red meat? All this is super high in iron, just like the rest of the liver and heart. Okay, very nutritious for you if you wanna eat it. Um, everything else, the intestines, all that, we're gonna cut, cut away. So we're gonna take our bird here and we're just going to kind of cut down the side, the tail here. Can you see? Try not to get in your way. Okay, so we've got that, and then we're gonna flip it over. And we're gonna come right above this little joint here. of this we throw away okay so now we're left with what looks a lot like a bird in the store with the exception of the neck so this neck um, you can keep it and also uh, well, you, we're gonna cut it off but you can also keep this neck and use it uh, some people like to eat the, the neck meat um, or if you um, want to toss it you can 
but it also makes a really good stock as well. So we're just going to make a few incisions down at the base here, loosen it up a little bit. And it pops right off. Okay? So you may have some extra skin. You can cut this all off and clean up your bird. Okay? Guys, that's it. We're gonna rinse this out. We'll put this bird on ice. But that's it. And um, this is how we start to finish process our birds. It's humane. Um, they're loved every step of the way, honestly, truly. Uh, we're appreciative of their life that they give and the nourishment that they give us. And I understand if it's um, those that can't hang out during this process, but I just wanted to share this part of our life with you. Be vulnerable in that way, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye, guys.